The following is a sponsored program paid for by Yaba TV. Welcome to our beautiful show, the Yaba TV show. I am your host, Yesia. So today, our topic is forgiveness. Hmm, it takes a lot to forgive. For some people, I know I used to be like that, but today, I'm a different person. But my guest on today's show, Abraham Wale Jimo, he has a special message about forgiveness to you, especially African Americans. So, we have a lot to share with you today. Tell everybody you know about our beautiful show. We'll be back after these messages. Hey. Hey. Welcome back to our beautiful show, the Yaba TV show. I am your host, Yesia. So today, we are talking about forgiveness. We know sometimes it's easier said than done to say, I forgive you. But guess what? Hmm, you may be holding some grudge. And I tell you what, I used to be like that. When it's time to forgive, I say, yeah, I forgive you, but I really don't mean it. But now I'm a different person. When I say I forgive, I let it go completely. But my guest on today's show, Ibrahim Wale Jimo, he's going to tell us what he feels about this topic. So I can't wait to hear what he has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, Please help me to welcome my guest on today's show, Abraham Wale Jimo. Welcome. Thank you for having me, and uh, good day to everybody where you are watching us. You're not a stranger on Yaba TV, but for the benefit of the people that are new, our audience is always growing. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Abraham Wale Jimo. Um, I'm from Nigeria, Share in the federal and local government of Kwara State. Mm -hmm. Uh, third of six children by wow. six. Six. Big family. Late. Jima Jolly had three wives. So. Oh my it, God. Three like, wives. Yes. And uh, so we have uh, my mom. How was life kids, like you know? being raised in a family with three wives? In those good days, it is very interesting. The idea of one man, one wife is purely foreign to Africa. And it's just... Some Africans, not all. Oh. Most Africans. In Africa, uh, I've not been to all African countries, but I've been to many. East Africa, West Africa, Mid Africa. Mm -hmm. I've been to many. The idea of one man, one wife is alien to African culture. Yes. We grew up learning the Western world, and we embrace some of the cultures that is alien to African culture. So one wife, so, one husband is alien, which very, is Western. Very, yes, it's uh -huh. very Western. Uh, Talk to me, you're a man from Africa. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my dad, like I said, had six children from three wives. Though, you know, he suffered from all those minor problems that used to snatch kids away. So he had several dead ones. So we, we surviving, we are six. I'm third of the six. Growing up in a, a polygamous life, like I said, was very interesting. We were our brother's keepers. We used to love each other. Actually, when I heard about my brother's loss, I, I broke down like a little kid because we used to go out playing together. Party together. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, in our days, we are used to fist fighting, fight for two minutes, come back to the same table, still, start, still Eat dying. in one bowl. In one bowl. These Wash days, your hands, yeah. dip your hand in the bowl the together. The Indian culture that we learned from the West is finishing up argument with gun. We don't do it in Africa. You go on the sand, hey, throw each other on the sand. If you are, if you are more powerful, I beat you. And you beat me, then we laugh. You make it up, yes. you make up later. We, we laugh. We go to, we, the next 30 minutes, we are together, playing together. But here, after UMF, UMF, he goes to the gun, he goes to the car and brings out the gun. 
start shooting people, killing everybody. We don't do that in Africa. But it's thankfully, not, not everybody does it here, too. I understand. So, let's talk true. about you. That is very true. That Since very you true. came from a polygamous family, yes. how are you doing now? Are you polygamous still? Uh, I'm not polygamous. But that does not really mean that it is because... Uh, if my economy could sustain it... You may possibly consider it. It, it is something <laughs> that is on the table. Uh -huh. But because of my age right now, mm -hmm. what I've been to, what I've seen in the world, in my life, I'm okay with where, where I am, and I'm not thinking of any kind of polygamous life anymore. Okay. But, yes. Okay. Yes. So, as our topic states today, forgiveness, what is your take on that? Uh, before I go to the topic, I will have to congratulate my brothers and sisters, daddies, friends, on the celebration of Black History Month, and also tell them to forgive us old people that sold them into slavery. So that is part of what we are treating today. Forgiveness is the art of moving away from revenging on somebody that you think hurts you. Mm -hmm. So you, you, get, you forgive mm -hmm. and you get forgiven. It is very, very important that you forgive. If you don't forgive, if somebody does something to you and you don't forgive that person, man, woman, and you, I mean, friend, relation, and you don't forgive, you carry the burden on your heart all the way. You keep carrying. Now, what does it do to you? It makes you look mean. You are never, you might seem happy, but you are never happy. Because all the time, you are thinking of that person that hurt you. You are not thinking of moving away from that person that hurt you and embrace peace. It's like a baggage hanging on your neck. Yes, on your neck. It's, you are carrying it everywhere. Mm -hmm. You are not thinking of moving away from that person that hurt you mm -hmm. and embrace peace. When you embrace peace, then it comes, it dawns on you that you are happier. You are happy to see uh, that guy again. You laugh together, you eat together. Sometimes when people hurt you, you think it's never possible to forgive. Mm. But no. I like your possible. approach on behalf of Africans. Yes. You are apologizing to African Americans yes. for what happened, yes. the slavery yes. transaction and all of that stuff. Yes. Um, we have a lot more to share with our audience, yes. but we need to take a quick break okay. to acknowledge the people that put a smile on our faces, okay. that bring this show and make it possible. And then when we come back, we'll continue our dialogue with Wally. So don't touch your dial. We'll be back after these messages. Hey. Welcome back to our beautiful show, the Yaba TV show. I am your host, Yasir. So today we are talking about forgiveness. And before we took a break, Ibrahim Wale Jima was asking or apologizing on behalf of Africans to African Americans and asking for forgiveness. It's quite interesting how you brought that um, to the table. Yes. Um, when you meet African Americans for the first time and you don't know them from Adam, Adams, and then so they speak to you, and what, what's going through your mind? You know, we have mm. unspoken friction sometimes. You know that. Yes, yes. My relationship with African Americans in this system and every other place is I see them as my blood. Mm. They are like the biblical Joseph that came, suffered, conquered, and made it possible for somebody like me to come in here and be somebody. They set the pace. Yes. Yes. They came, worked hard, went through all the, went Arts. through, which is, I mean, it's not something I, I want to start talking on this on, the, on, the, on this program because mm -hmm. it's going to bring up some kind of, you know, if, but we know what they went through for years, mm -hmm. 400 years plus. They couldn't have done it by themselves in terms of uh, coming back, bouncing back, but they also had the opportunity of being joined up by 
progressive whites, progressive uh, Mexicans, progressive uh, Belizeans. Who believe in the spirit of oneness yes. and don't see color. Yes. Uh -huh. So at that point, I was just seized the opportunity to also thank our black, hard working brothers and sisters who are inventors, scientists, teachers, mothers, uh, caretakers, caregivers, and all the rest of them that stood. They, they worked hard. They are prog to, pro productive members yeah, of, society. of the society. They, mm -hmm. they worked hard to liberate the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Now I will seize the opportunity again to uh, invite our new generation mm. to imbibe the spirit of our fighting fathers, fighting forefathers who came, worked under very, very, very adverse condition, also fought seriously to liberate us, to get us to where we are right now. Mm -hmm. So when I see my brother, African-American, uh, African lady, I don't see them as my enemy. They are my friends in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. they, you look at them as pioneers. Yes. Mm -hmm. they, they are the ones that made it possible for me to come in here. And have a business um, um, like what you do have now. Yes. And I work hard and got a business. Talking about business, yes. you have two businesses, correct? Yes, ma'am. Let's talk about that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have a PPO, private patrol security company. Uh, we do all, we provide security service for offices, parks, uh, hotels, schools. And on top of it, we also have a recognized training program by BSIS, Bureau of Security and Investigative Services, mm -hmm. and also the Homeland Security. Either to 9-11, security used to be a job for the elderly and for students to augment income mm -hmm. just for you to survive within this society. But now it has been professionalized. We, we, do, we, we work, we literally, we are just the first contact be between the society and the police. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. When the police officer is trained to enforce the law, we are trained to observe and see what is happening and give report. a report. Mm -hmm. And also, these days, the BSIS amended the security uh, officer's job to include ap uh, application of minimum force. So after 9-11, the whole thing changed. Mm -hmm. you, these days, you really need to know what you are doing. Uh, what you need to be a police officer is what you need to be a security guard. Do you offer training? Yes. That's, that's, the, that's what I just said. After 9-11, they professionalized a security job. So for you to train, your, prog your training program must be approved by BSIS, Bureau of Security and Investigative Services. Mm -hmm. Also, the Homeland Security. You, they will go through it and make sure you know what you are doing. So we train... Uh, school guard, normal guard, and private security guards. And we also train people in executive production, uh, protection. Mm -hmm. So it's, security is like, we have cyber security, which is part of security job. Mm -hmm. you, you, it's, it's been professionalized to the, to the extent that you can be whatever you want to be in that field. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other business you're talking about is staffing. Uh, we, we send out nurses, caregivers to help people needy, needing help. We assist them, remind them of the medication, take them out, uh, accompany them. Run around. Uh, run, run around. Uh, prepare meals if they need meals, and also at least keep them company. Mm. It, uh, happily, or, yeah, I say happily because it has gotten to a stage now that a, a city in this California, which will be followed by more other cities, have recognized that 
Loneliness is a disease. Mm. It's driving people to depression. It's killing a lot of people. So hitherto they used to have uh, 800 number that you could call. But instead of the 800 number, the city is now saying, hey, send somebody there. Let the city be responsible for taking care of that person. Mm. Send somebody there and keep that person company. Make sure they have maximum peaceful life. Mm -hmm. So that's... Uh, Wonderful. We do that too. Yes, thank you. So, for the sake of time, yes. there are people that are watching today that want to connect with you. How can they reach you? Looking at this camera. Our supervisors, our manager, our manager. When you call her, Gloria Ugu, you call her. Twenty-four hours, she picks up her phone. If she doesn't pick up her phone, she check the phone. She call you back. You call me. And what's the contact uh, number? Office number is three two three. Seven five 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 six three six, and the cell phone is five six two five one three eight zero nine three. That's my cell phone. Mm -hmm. Her work phone is three one zero eight seven one zero three nine six, and she picks up the phone all the time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, you thank you so much yes. for your time on yeah. our show. Uh, for we could sit here and talk yes. a lot more because okay. there's a lot more embedded in you, I can tell. Yes. But we are totally out of time. So I do want to thank you for your time on the show and I thank you for sharing what you've shared today on the show and I wish you continuous success in all of your endeavors. Thank you very much, our viewers, and please watch more of CSA. We are here to work together as African American, Africa, African American. So we are one. We are not enemies. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. We do need to take another quick break to acknowledge our sponsors. And then after that, we are taking you to Music Video Land. That's the place some of you take the time to write me to me. Thank you, CS here, for bringing me the consciousness of Africa to my home. And today, we have another great music video coming your way. So you don't want to miss it. Put on your dancing shoes if you want to dance. And then when we come back, we're going to wrap up with the show. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our television broadcast today. We are on every Sunday at 4 p.m. right here on KCAL Los Angeles. If you are a regular viewer, you know we bring you something that you can use, information that you can use. That's what Yaba TV does, bridging the cultural divide based on first-hand knowledge between Africans, African Americans, and our beautiful community at large. So on today's show, we talked about forgiveness. And if you watch the show, you know we had a special unique message just for you, especially African Americans. So if you if you like to be a guest on this show and you have what it takes to be a guest on my show, contact us. If you're just coming in town and want to connect with our international platform, contact us. If you're getting married or you have a special uh, celebration and you want coverage on Yaba TV, contact us. Our phone number is 562-833-8294. Again, 562-833-8294. Follow us on Instagram, Yaba TV Los Angeles. Follow us on YouTube, Yaba TV Los Angeles. While you're there, like, share, and subscribe. That put a big smile on my face. Ta-da! Till then, we'll see you next week at the same time on the Yaba TV show, your contemporary bridge to the motherland, Africa. Africa.